Hello, I am Jorgo Gushi, a qualified professional with a Bachelor of Science and Master of Science degree from Worcester Polytechnic Institute in Electrical and Computer Engineering. My expertise lies in the areas of wireless communications and signal processing, which have been the focal points of my academic journey. I would like to welcome you to the third lecture of the Generalized Physical and System Architecture of 5G microcourse. In Lecture 3, we are going to cover 5G uplink as a concept and dive deeper into its characteristics. Let me start by giving a brief overview of Lecture 3. We will start with a recap of the most important concepts covered in Lecture 2. Then we will proceed with an introduction to the architecture of 5G uplink, dive deeper into the 5G physical uplink channels, cover the concept of uplink control information, and then describe 5G uplink transport channels. We will end the lecture with an overview of the modulation and coding schemes in 5G uplink. In the previous lecture, we gave an introduction to the architecture of 5G downlink, talked about the 5G NR physical and transport channels, and covered the downlink control information. We further discussed the modulation and coding schemes in 5G downlink. Disclaimer! Please note that while there exist various modeling and analysis tools for 5G, within the scope of this microcourse, our references are specifically related to the utilization of the 5G toolbox from the MathWorks. 5G uplink refers to the communication path that enables data transmission from a user device, such as a smartphone or IoT device, to a cellular network space station or cell tower. It is an essential component of the fifth generation wireless technology, which is designed to provide significantly faster data speeds, lower latency, and better connectivity compared to its predecessors. Some key characteristics of the 5G uplink include 5G uplink offers higher upload speeds compared to previous generations of cellular technology, allowing users to transmit data, such as videos, images, and documents, much more quickly. 5G uplink aims to minimize latency or the delay between sending a data packet and receiving a response. This is crucial for applications that require real-time interactions such as online gaming, video conferencing and remote control devices. 5G uplink is designed to support a larger number of connected devices simultaneously. This is particularly important in crowded areas or during large events where many devices are competing for network resources. Further, 5G uplink utilizes advanced techniques such as higher order modulation and multiple antenna technologies such as MIMO to maximize the efficient use of available radio frequency spectrum. 5G networks employ sophisticated techniques for managing network resources, dynamically allocating bandwidth, and adjusting transmission parameters to ensure optimal performance for both uplink and downlink communications. The 5G uplink is optimized to cater to the requirements of various Internet of Things devices, which often have diverse communication needs, ranging from small data transfers to occasional larger uploads. Some key components of the 5G uplink architecture include the user equipment, often referred to as the UE, or simply the user device, which is the device used by individuals to access the cellular network. This includes smartphones, tablets, laptops, IoT devices, and more. Further, we have uplink transmission techniques. 5G uplink employs transmission techniques like orthogonal frequency division multiple access, or OFDMA, and single carrier frequency division multiple access, or SCFDMA. OFDMA allows multiple users to share the same frequency resources, while SCFDMA is used to mitigate the peak to average power ratio. Further, we have uplink control channels. Uplink control channels, such as the physical uplink control channel, or PUCCH, are used for transmitting control information from the user device to the network. This includes acknowledgements, scheduling requests, and other control signals. Last, we have HARQ, or the Hybrid Automatic Repeat Request, which is an error correction mechanism in the uplink to ensure reliable data transmission. It involves the transmission of erroneous packets, helping to improve data integrity and link reliability. The 5G network architecture includes a hierarchy of channels that play crucial roles in the communication process. We start with logical channels. Logical channels operate at the highest level in the 5G channel hierarchy and are closely related to the application layer. They define how data is organized and segmented for specific services and applications. 
Further, we have transport channels that sit above the physical channels in the hierarchy and are responsible for error correction, retransmissions, and multiplexing or demultiplexing of data. These channels ensure reliable data transfer between the GNode B and the UE. Last, we have the physical channels, which are the lowest level in the 5G channel hierarchy and deal directly with the physical layer of the network. They represent the actual radio waves and electromagnetic signals transmitted over the air between the transmitter and the receiver. 5G NR defines several types of physical uplink channels to accommodate various communication requirements, including control signaling, data transmission, and synchronization. We start with the physical uplink control channel, PUCCH is used for transmitting uplink control information, acknowledgements, and channel information, or CSI reports. It operates in different formats to accommodate various types of control information. Further, we have the PUSCH, or Physical Uplink Shared Channel. PUSCH is the primary channel for transmitting user data in the uplink. It supports data control information transmission and utilizes adaptive modulation and coding schemes. Next, we have the Physical Random Access Channel. The main purpose of the patch is to provide a mechanism for devices to request resources for uplink transmission. During the initial access procedure, the user device transmits a patch preamble, which is a short and predefined signal, to the base station. The base station uses this preamble to estimate the channel conditions and synchronize with the device's timing. 5G NR's physical uplink channels are designed to support massive Internet of Things deployments with lower power devices transmitting sporadic and small data payloads efficiently. 5G NR employs advanced power control mechanisms to optimize uplink transmission. This includes both open loop and closed loop power control strategies to maintain the desired signal quality at the base station. 5G NR uplink supports multiple antenna configurations, enabling spatial multiplexing and beamforming. This enhances signal quality and capacity by exploiting the spatial diversity. The network dynamically schedules the use of uplink resources, optimizing the allocation of time and frequency slots to different user devices based on their channel conditions and the traffic demands. 5G NR allows for flexible subcarrier spacing, enabling efficient use of the available spectrum and accommodating different deployment scenarios. 5G NR uplink channels utilize high order modulation schemes and adaptive coding to achieve higher data rates while maintaining reliable communication. Let's talk about the physical uplink share channel. The PUSCH is designed to carry user generated data from multiple devices simultaneously to the network. Similar to the downlink, PUSCH operates as a shared resource, accommodating multiple users' data transmissions in a coordinated manner. The PUSCH has several essential components that enable efficient data transmission. It carries actual user data, such as files, videos, or messages from the user equipment to the base station. The PUSCH employs adaptive modulation and coding schemes to adjust the transmission parameters based on the channel condition. This ensures efficient spectrum usage and reliable communication. To enhance demodulation accuracy, the PUSCH uses demodulation reference signals, or DMRS, that help the receiver decode the, re the transmitted data accurately. The network dynamically schedules resources for the PUSCH based on the user's needs and channel conditions. This optimized resource allocation ensure, ensures the efficient use of the available bandwidth. Further, the hybrid automatic repeat request is employed to improve reliability. If the received data is corrupted, the UE retransmits the erroneous parts, enhancing the overall data integrity. Furthermore, PUSCH benefits from multiple input, multiple output technology and beamforming. MIMO exploits multiple antennas to improve the signal quality and increase the data rates, whereas beamforming focuses on the transmission power in specific directions, enhancing the signal-to-noise ratio and extending coverage. Resources for PUSCH are allocated in both the time and frequency domains. This mapping is crucial to avoid interference and optimize the utilization of the spectrum. Dynamic resource allocation allows the network to adapt resources based on the changing needs of users and the evolving network condition. This ensures efficient use of the available resources as well. 
the modulation encoding schemes, or MCS, used in PUSCH significantly impact data transmission quality. Higher order modulation schemes, including 64 QOM and 256 QOM, are employed in PUSCH to achieve higher data rates when the conditions allow. Error correction codes like LDPC and polar codes are used to enhance data integrity, enabling reliable communication even in the presence of noise and interference. Uplink power control is crucial for maintaining consistent and optimal signal quality. Devices adjust their transmission powers based on the network's feedback to ensure the received signal strength at the base station is neither too weak nor too strong. Further, uplink power control operates dynamically adapting to changes in channel conditions and network load to maintain a balanced power level. The efficient operation of uh, PUSCH and uplink transmission directly contributes to the network efficiency and the capacity. PUSCH is the dedicated channel for transmitting user data to the network. Its efficiency impacts the overall quality of service experienced by users. Further, optimized resource allocation, modulation, encoding, and power control enhance the overall network's capacity to accommodate a larger number of users and deliver higher data rates. The physical uplink control channel is designed to carry crucial control information and feedback from user devices to the network. The PUCCH operates in two formats, Format 1 for scheduling requests and Format 2 for hybrid automatic repeat request feedback. Unlike the PUSCH that carries user data, the PUCCH is dedicated to transmitting control signals essential for coordinating and managing the communication link. Resource allocation for PUCCH is carefully planned to ensure efficient transmission of control signals. PUCCH is allocated specific time frequency resources within a subframe. These resources are used exclusively for transmitting the control information. Similar to PUSCH, PUCCH resources can also be dynamically allocated based on user demand and network conditions. Adaptive allocation optimizes the use of the available resources. Modulation and coding schemes in PUCCH are designed for reliable control signal transmission. QPSK is the primary modulation scheme used in PUCCH due to its robustness against noise and interference. The choice of QPSK helps ensure that control signals are accurately received. PUCCH uses powerful error correction codes, such as low-density parity check and polar codes, to enhance control signal reliability. These codes enable the receiver to correct errors that might occur during transmission. PUCCH supports different formats to accommodate various types of control information. Format 0, used for transmitting scheduling requests, allowing users' devices to request resources for uplink data transmission. Format 1 carries uplink acknowledgments and negative acknowledgments for downlink data transmission. It helps ensure data integrity and reliability. Format 2 is reserved for carrying channel state information, or CSI feedback, which assists the network in optimizing its resource allocation. PUCCH in general is vital for efficient coordination between users' devices and the network, ensuring reliable communication, resource allocation, and feedback. The reliability of PUCCH's control signals directly impacts the network's ability to manage connection, data transmission, and user experiences. As we mentioned earlier, Format 0 is used when user devices require additional resources for transmitting data, ensuring that their data transmission needs are met efficiently. Format 1 is critical for maintaining reliable data transmission by acknowledging or requesting retransmissions for downlink data. Format 2 assists the network in optimizing its resource allocation based on channel conditions, enhancing overall network efficiency. The physical random access channel is a pivotal mechanism within the 5G uplink communication framework. Its primary purpose is to serve as the gateway through which user devices establish their initial communication with the network. Think of Pratch as the digital handshake that enables devices to request network resources and make their presence known to the network. Pratch is the first step in the process of a device joining the network. When a user device, be it a smartphone, IoT sensor, or any other connected device, enters the coverage area 
of a cell or powers on, it needs a way to initiate communication with the network. This is where Pratch comes into play. Some key concepts about Pratch. Devices send access requests using Pratch. These requests are like virtual knocks on the network's door, indicating that a device wants to establish communication. Access requests are transmitted as random access preambles, short sequences of symbols that carry essential information to identify the device and its intention to communicate. As multiple devices may send preambles simultaneously, contention resolution mechanisms within the network ensure that collisions are minimized. The network manages these collisions efficiently, ensuring that each device gets its chance to be heard. Initial RRC connection setup. Successful access requests lead to the establishment of the initial radio resource control, or RRC connection, making the beginning of a communication session between the device and the network. Pratch's significance lies in the role as the bridge between user devices and the network. Pratch is the only means of for devices to send their initial access requests to the network. Without Pratch, devices wouldn't have any way to initiate communication. This channel allows devices to announce their presence in the network's coverage area. This presence is crucial for the network to manage resources and of course establish communication. Successful access via Pratch grants devices the resources they need to continue their communication. This might include allocating specific channels for data transmission. Uplink Control Information, or UCI, stands as a cornerstone of efficient and coordinated communication within the 5G ecosystem. This critical element encompasses a range of control-related data that user devices transmit to the network, conveying their status, requests, acknowledgements, and other essential control signaling. UCI plays a pivotal role in coordinating network operations, optimizing resource allocation, and ensuring the effective uplink communication. By conveying their requirements through UCI, devices enable the network to allocate resources optimally, minimizing delays and maximizing throughput. UCI allows the network to adapt its strategies based on real-time channel conditions, user demands and congestion levels. UCI aids in managing interference by enabling devices to adjust their power levels according to network commands, ensuring balanced signal strength. UCI further helps maintain a consistent quality of service by facilitating timely transmissions, resource allocation, and adapting communication parameters. UCI encapsulates different types of control information, each serving a specific purpose in managing communication. We have HARQ acknowledgments and negative acknowledgments. Devices use ACK and NACK to inform the network about the successful or unsuccessful reception of downlink data. This data helps the network determine whether retransmission is necessary to ensure reliable data delivery. We have Channel State Information, or CSI, reports that provide the network with information about channel conditions. Devices communicate signal quality, interference, and other relevant metrics to optimize resource allocation for uplink and downlink transmission. We have Scheduling Requests, or SRs, which are essential for devices to request resources from the network for uplink data transmission. When a device has data to send, it uses SRs to signal its need for dedicated resources. Devices receive power control commands from the network to adjust their transmission power. This control ensures a balanced power level across devices, minimizing interference and optimizing network performance. Then we have Channel Quality Indicators, or CQI reports, convey information about the quality of the uplink channel. This data helps the network adapt modulation, coding, and resource allocation to maintain optimal data rates. Let's talk about the key contents of 5G UCI. First, we have the HARQ Acknowledgement, which is one of the most critical components of UCI. It is used to convey information about the success or failure of the downlink data transmission. The UE sends acknowledgement or negative acknowledgement to indicate whether the received data was correctly decoded. Further, we have the scheduling request that we mentioned earlier. The SR is used by the UE to request resources for uplink transmission. When the UE has data to transmit, but no allocated resources, it sends an SR to the GNODE-B requesting resources for uplink transmission. Further, we have the channel quality indicator. 
CQI is a measure of the channel quality between the UE and the G node B. It indicates how well the channel can support higher data rates. The UE periodically sends CQI reports to the G node B to help it adapt the modulation and coding schemes for optimal data transmission. Further, let's talk about the precoding matrix indicator, or PMI. PMI is used to provide information about the precoding matrix to be used by the GNode B for beamforming. Beamforming helps improve the signal quality and capacity of the wireless link. Then we have the Channel State Information Reference Signal, or CSIRS, reports. These reports provide feedback to the GNode B about the channel conditions for a specific reference signal. CSIRS is used for beamforming and MIMO transmission, and the UE periodically sends reports to help optimize these techniques. The UE also sends buffer status reports to indicate how much data is waiting to be transmitted. This information helps the GNODE B allocate resources efficiently and ensure that the UE's data is transmitted in a timely manner. UCI may also include power control commands, which instruct the UE to adjust its transmit power. This helps maintain a desired signal-to-interference plus noise ratio and ensures efficient use of the network resources. Depending on the specific network configurations and requirements, UCI may also include other control information, such as scheduling requests for specific services, paging information, and various flags and indicators related to the network control functions. Uplink transport channels stand as essential conduits within the intricate architecture of 5G communication, facilitating the transmission of user data and control information from user devices to the network. These channels are the backbone of uplink communication, playing a pivotal role in ensuring seamless connectivity, efficient resource allocation, and robust network performance. Uplink transport channels offer a diverse set of pathways for communication between user devices and the network, whether it's data generated by applications, control signals indicating the status of transmissions, or acknowledgements confirming data reception, these channels form the foundation of bidirectional communication in 5G networks. Uplink transport channels are crucial for optimizing communication in multiple ways. By offering specific pathways for different types of data, these channels enable the network to allocate resources based on the content being transmitted. This minimizes delays and maximizes overall throughput. Channels like PUCCH ensure effective control and coordination between devices and the network. Uplink control information is instrumental in fine-tuning network operations, ensuring reliability and, of course, maintaining the quality of service. Efficient handovers between cells require reliable uplink communication. Uplink transport channels facilitate smooth handovers by ensuring that devices can seamlessly transmission between cells while maintaining the connectivity. The landscape of uplink transport channels is characterized by multiple types, each with distinct roles and purposes. Here are some of the key uplink transport channels in 5G. First, we have the physical random access channel. Pratch is used by the UEs to initiate communication with the base station. UEs send random access preambles on the Pratch to request access to the network or to establish or re-establish a connection. The physical uplink shared channel is the primary channel for carrying uplink user data in networks. It is used for transmitting user-generated traffic such as voice, video, and data. We have the physical uplink control channel, which is dedicated for carrying uplink control information from the UE to the base station. We have the physical uplink control channel for scheduling. PUCCHS is an extension to the PC PUCCH used specifically for scheduling requests. UEs use this channel to request resources from the base station, indicating their need for uplink transmission. Further, we have the physical uplink control channel for HARQ. PUCCHH is used for hybrid automatic repeat request feedback. UE send acknowledgement and negative acknowledgement signals to inform the base station about the successful or unsuccessful reception of downlink data. Further, let's talk about physical uplink control channel for CSI. PUCCH-C is dedicated to channel state information reporting. UE send feedback regarding the quality of the uplink channel, helping the base station optimize resource allocation. For further, we have Sounding Reference Signals, or SRS, which is used for uplink channel quality measurement and estimation. 
UAs periodically transmit SRS to provide feedback for the quality of the uplink channel. The uplink transport channels are designed to ensure efficient and reliable communication between UEs and the base station. They cater to a wide range of use cases for transmitting high-speed data to sending control signals and feedback, making them essential for the proper functioning of the 5G networks. The flexibility and adaptability of these channels are key to delivering the diverse services and applications that 5G technology supports. Let's now talk about the broadcast channel. The BCH has several key characteristics that make it integral to network operations, especially during the initial phases of a device connecting to the network. Let's examine these characteristics closely. So, the primary role of the BCH is to broadcast essential system information to all user equipment within the cell. This information includes network configuration, access procedures, and other critical data that UEs need to know before they can effectively communicate with the network. Think of BCH as the network's public announcement system, conveying necessary information to everyone in the area. BCH is crucial during the initial network entry process. When a UE first attempts to connect to the network, it relies on the BCH for initial synchronization. This means that the UE uses information on the BCH to align itself with the network's timing and frequency parameters, a step that is essential for establishing the communication. The BCH provides details about resource mapping and the modulation schemes used by the network. This includes information about how resources are distributed across the network and the specific modulation techniques that the network employs. This information is vital for the UEs to understand how to interact with the network and decode the signals they receive. The design of BCH is adaptive. This means it can adjust its broadcasting parameters based on various factors, such as the size of the cell and the density of the, US, the UEs in the area. This adaptability ensures that the BCH remains effective in different network environments and conditions. Finally, the BCH interacts closely with higher layers in the network's architecture. It provides a foundation upon which higher layer functionalities like network selection and access stardom procedures are built. The information for the BCH is used by these higher layers to make decisions about network management and resource allocation. In summary, the BCH is a vital channel for disseminating crucial network information to UEs facilitating initial network entry and synchronization, and of course guiding UEs in understanding the resource mapping and modulation schemes of the network. It's the backbone element in ensuring the seamless integration and communication within the 5G networks. Let's now turn our attention to the uplink share channel, often abbreviated as ULSCH, a pivotal component in the architecture of 5G networks. ULSCH is instrumental in handling user data transmission from the devices to the network. At its core, ULSCH is designed for transmitting user data. Whether it's a video stream or voice call or internet data, this channel carries the information from the user equipment to the network. It's the main artery for uplink data flow in 5G. One of the standout features of ULSCH is its dynamic resource allocation capability. The network can dynamically assign resources such as bandwidth and time slots. The ULSCH based on the current demand and network conditions. This flexibility is crucial for managing network traffic efficiently and ensuring, of course, the high quality communication. The shared aspect of ULSCH implies that multiple users can utilize this channel simultaneously. This is achieved through a sophisticated scheduling algorithm that ensures fair and efficient distribution of network resources among all the active users. ULSCH is intricately mapped onto physical resources. This involves translating the data and control information into specific formats and signals that can be transmitted over the air. This mapping is vital for the effective utilization of the radio spectrum and the physical infrastructure of the network. The channel employs uh, adaptive modulation and coding schemes, which means it can adjust in its transmission parameters in real time based on the quality of the radio link. This adaptability helps in optimizing the data rates and ensuring robust communication, even in uh, varying network conditions. ULSCH interacts seamlessly with higher layers of the network. This interaction involves talk 
taking cues from higher layer protocols for aspects like error correction, data integrity, and most importantly, security. It ensures that ULSCH um, operates in harmony with the overall network architecture and policies. In summary, the Uplink shared channel is dynamic, flexible, and an efficient channel, playing a critical role in handling the Uplink transmission. We talked about the physical random access channel earlier. Now let's talk about the random access channel in general. This channel plays a fundamental role in how user devices initiate communication with the 5G network. So the primary purpose of the random access channel is to facilitate user devices in sending access requests to the network. This is essential for setting up the initial connection and initiating data transmission. Whether a device is attempting to join the network for the first time or reconnect after a period of inactivity, it uses the random access channel to signal its presence and readiness to communicate. Um, the operation of RAJ is based on the contention-based access mechanism. This means that multiple devices may attempt to access the network simultaneously via the RACH. Given the number of devices that could be trying to connect at any time, especially in dense urban environments or during high demand periods, contention is an inherent aspect of this process. To manage this contention, devices transmit what are known as random access preambles. These preambles are short, unique sequences that identify each access attempt. The network uses these preambles to differentiate between multiple simultaneous access requests, which is a critical step in managing the communication process efficiently. Once these preambles are received, the network takes over the responsibility of the contention resolution. It processes the multiple access attempts, discerning between them, and allocates resources to each requesting device in a managed and orderly fashion. This resolution process is crucial to prevent access collisions and ensure that each device gets a fair opportunity to connect to the network. In essence, the random access channel is a vital gateway for devices entering the 5G network. Its efficient functioning is of course key to managing the initial stages of the network access and ensuring that user devices can establish a stable and reliable connection for their communication needs. Modulation and coding schemes, or MCS, are integral components of 5G's downlink and uplink communication responsible for achieving efficient data transmission. They involve selecting suitable combinations of modulation and error correcting codes to optimize trade-offs between data rate, spectral efficiency, and error performance. MCS in the context of 5G uplink is all about maximizing data transmission efficiency. The primary goal here is to ensure that data transmitted from user devices to the network is not only fast, but also reliable and robust against various channel conditions. MCS in 5G involves carefully choosing the right combination of two key elements, modulation techniques and error correcting codes. Modulation refers to how we map digital data onto carrier signals, while error correcting codes are methods used to detect and correct the errors that occur during the transmission process. The choice of MCS is a balancing act. On one side we have the data rate, which is how fast data can be transmitted, and on the other side we have spectral efficiency, which is about maximizing the amount of data transmitted over a given bandwidth. And finally, we have error performance, which is about ensuring that the data gets transmitted accurately and reliably. The MCS aims to find the optimal balance between these three aspects to adapt to varying network conditions and user requirements. One of the key features of MCS is in 5G is its uh, adaptive nature. The network dynamically adjusts modulation schemes and coding weights based on the real-time feedback about channel conditions. This means that if the channel quality is high, the network can use higher order modulation schemes like 64 QAM or even 256 QAM to push more data through. Conversely, if a, the channel quality is poor, the network might switch to more robust modulation schemes and increase the level of error correction to maintain, of course, the data integrity. In conclusion, MCS are at the heart of the, hub, the 5G uplink efficiency. They enable the network to smartly adapt to changing conditions and, of course, user demands, ensuring that the uplink communication is not only fast, but also reliable. QPSK and 16QAM. Understanding these schemes is crucial for comprehending how data is efficiently encoded and transmitted in a 5G network. 
Quadrature Phase Shift King, or QPSK. This modulation scheme uses four distinct phase shifts to represent data, with each phase shift encoding two bits per symbol. Imagine each phase shift is a unique orientation in a circle, each representing a combination of two bits. The beauty of QPSK is its uh, robustness. It's less susceptible to channel impairments like noise and fading, making it a reliable choice for scenarios where signal quality might not be optimal. However, the trade-off here is the data rates. Since QPSK encodes only two bits per symbol, its data rate is lower compared to more complex schemes. It strikes a balance between efficiency and reliability, making it a good choice for maintaining communication integrity under the challenging conditions. 16 QAM, or Quadrature Amplitude Modulation, uh, this scheme steps up the game by encoding 4 bits per symbol. It achieves this by using a combination of phase and amplitude variations. Think of 16 QAM as a grid with 16 different points, each representing a unique a combination of phase and amplitude, thus encoding 4 bits. The advantage of 16 QAM is its higher data rate, as it can transmit more information per symbol compared to QPSK. However, this comes with increased sensitivity to noise and interference. The more complex the encoding scheme, like in 16 QAM, the more susceptible it is to distortions in the channel. This makes it ideal for scenarios where channel conditions are relatively good, allowing for faster data transmission without a significant loss in the signal integrity. In summary, QPSK and 16QAM are two fundamental modulation schemes in 5G uplink, each with its own set of strengths and trade-offs. QPSK offers robustness and reliability, while 16QAM pushes for higher data rates. The choice between these schemes is often dynamically made by the network based on the real-time channel conditions, of course striking a balance between speed and reliability. Continuing our exploration of modulation schemes in 5G uplink, we now shift our focus to the two higher order schemes, 64QAM and 256QAM. These schemes enable even higher data rates, but they also require better channel conditions. 64 QAM, uh, with 64 QAM, we're stepping up into a realm of even higher data transmission efficiency. This modulation scheme encodes 6 bits per symbol. Imagine a grid with 64 different points, each representing a unique combination of phase and amplitude, and thus encoding 6 bits. The significant benefit of 64 QAM is its ability to provide higher data rates compared to QPSK and 16 QAM. However, this efficiency comes with a caveat. 64 QAM is more sensitive to channel conditions. It requires higher quality of signal to maintain integrity. In scenarios where the signal to noise ratio is favorable, 64 QAM can substantially increase the throughput of the link communication. Then we have uh, 256 QAM which is at the peak of current modulation technology in 5G uplink. This advanced scheme encodes 8 bits per symbol using a grid with 256 different points. The data rate capabilities of 256 QAM are the highest among these discussed schemes, making it a powerful tool for maximizing throughput. However, with great power come great responsibility. 256 QAM is highly sensitive to any form of channel impairments and noise. It demands very favorable channel conditions to function effectively. The use of 256 QAM is typically reserved for scenarios where the network can ensure a high quality signal, allowing for the most efficient data transmissions possible. In conclusion, as we move from QPSK to 16 QAM, then to 64 QAM, and finally 256 QAM, we see a clear trend. The potential data rate increases, but so does the need for better channel conditions and signal quality. In 5G networks, the choice of modulation scheme is dynamically adapted based on the real-time analysis of the channel conditions, of course ensuring that the, each user's connection is efficient and reliable as possible under the given circumstances. Let's turn our attention to the critical aspect of error correction in 5G uplink communication, focusing on the coding schemes used. These coding schemes play a vital role in ensuring data integrity and reliability during the transmission. So let's explore three key coding schemes, turbo coding, LDPC, and polar coding. Turbo codes are an advanced form of error correcting codes that are employed in 5G uplink, particularly effective for high data rate applications. 
Their design involves the use of multiple encoders and decoders working in a parallel or interleaved manner. This setup allows them to effectively mitigate errors introduced during transmission. Turbo codes are known for their ability to perform close to the Shannon limit, which is the theoretical maximum efficiency of data transmission over a noisy channel. They are especially useful in scenarios where the signal quality might not be optimal, enabling the recovery of original data, even in the presence of noise and interference. Then we have the Low Density Parity Check, or LDPC codes, which are another class of powerful error correction codes. They stand out for their excellent performance in terms of error correction capability and their relatively low decoding complexity. LDPC codes work by creating a system of linear equations that represent the transmitted data. The receiver solves these equations to detect and correct errors in the received data. Their low density structure makes them particularly efficient for interactive decoding for iterative decoding algorithms, allowing for effective error correction with manageable computational complexity. In 5G, LDPC codes are used for their robustness and efficiency, particularly in high throughput applications. The final scheme we'll discuss is polar coding. Polar codes are notable for their capacity achieving properties, especially in control channels of 5G networks. They are based on the concept of channel polarization, which involves transforming a set of physical channels into virtual channels, some of which are very reliable while others are not. Data bits are then allocated accordingly, with more important bits being sent over to the more reliable channels. This unique approach allows polar codes to achieve high levels of data transmission uh, efficiency, making them well suited for control channels in 5G where reliability is paramount. In summary, turbo coding, LDPC, and polar coding are three cornerstone coding schemes in the 5G communication system. Each offers unique advantages in terms of error correction, data rate, and performance under the varying channel conditions. And understanding these schemes is essential for grasping how 5G networks maintain high data integrity and reliability in uplink transmissions. As we've seen, MCS plays a pivotal role in determining the efficiency and reliability of data transmission, but they come with inherent trade-offs that impact data rate, spectral efficiency, and error performance. One of the primary goals of higher order modulation schemes like 64QAM and 256QAM is to increase data rates, allowing more bits to be transmitted per symbol. Of course, this results in faster data transmission, which is crucial for bandwidth intensive applications like high definition video streaming or large file transfers. However, as we climb the ladder of higher order modulation, we also increase the susceptibility to channel impairments. Factors like noise, signal fading, and interference become more problematic, leading to potential errors in data transmission. Thus, while higher data rates are desirable, they also require a more robust and stable channel to maintain accuracy. Spectral efficiency is all about how effectively we can transmit data within a given bandwidth. Higher order MCS can uh, pack more data into the same spectral space, making them more efficient in terms of bandwidth utilization. This efficiency is critical in dense network environments where spectrum resources are limited. However, the trade-off here is that as we push for higher spectral efficiency, the complexity of signal processing increases and then system becomes more sensitive to channel conditions and impairments. Lastly, let's talk about error performance. While higher order modulation and coding schemes have the potential to achieve higher data rates, they also tend to be more sensitive to noise, interference, and channel fading. This sensitivity can lead to a higher probability of errors in data transmission. To combat this, robust error correcting codes like LDPC or turbo coding are employed. These coding schemes help in mitigating the errors but add complexity in the decoding process at the receiver's end. In conclusion, the selection of MCS in the 5G uplink is a careful balancing act. Network operators and engineers must weigh the benefits of higher data rates and spectral efficiency against the increased likelihood of errors and the need for more robust error correction. This balance is key to optimizing the performance of 5G networks, ensuring they can deliver high-speed, reliable communication under a wide range of conditions.
To wrap up the discussion on 5G uplink, we started by introducing the overall architecture of 5G uplink, setting the foundation for our detailed exploration. We then examined key physical channels like PUSCH and PUCCH, essential for transmitting user data and control signals. We then explored the importance of UCI in coordinating network operations and optimizing resource allocation. We discussed transport channels such as physical random access channel, vital for data transmission and network connectivity. Lastly, we delved into modulation schemes like QPSK, 16QAM, and higher order QAMs, along with other coding schemes like turbo coding and LDPC, which are the crucial uh, elements for efficient and reliable data transmission. This lecture provided an in-depth look at the critical components of 5G uplink, highlighting their roles and importance uh, to the network. To check your understanding, you can visit the MathWorks documentation page titled Understand 5G Uplink. Furthermore, you can navigate the following hands-on example and answer the questions on the next slide. The example I am providing here is a new radio PUCCH block error rate. Some food for thought. In your own time, answer the following questions. What is the PUCCH used for in the NR system? Explain its significance in the overall communication process. Second, which channel coding scheme is used for the PUCCH in the example provided in the previous slide? Explain its purpose and how it contributes to the error correction. Third, what are the main factors that can impact the block error rate of the PUCCH? Explain how each factor affects the performance. Furthermore, we have some hands-on assessment. The first hands-on assessment is to modify the example code to change the modulation scheme used for PUCCH transmission. Assess the impact of different modulation schemes on the block error rate. The expected behavior is a comparative analysis of block error rate for different modulation schemes. Some helpful hints. First, locate the code section where the modulation scheme is defined. Second, modify the modulation scheme parameter to a different scheme, for example, QPSK or 16QAM. Third, run the simulation and collect the block error rate for the modified modulation scheme. And last, compare the block error rates obtained with different modulation schemes. For the second hands-on assessment, analyze the code to understand how channel impairments such as additive white Gaussian noise or fading are modeled and applied to the physical uplink control channel signals. The expected behavior is understanding of channel impairments modeling for PUCCH transmission. Some helpful hints. First, study the code sections related to the channel modeling and impairments. Second, identify the specific channel model used, such as additive white Gaussian noise, Riley fading, and etc. and its parameters. And last, explain how the channel impairments are applied to the PUCCH signals during simulation. Thank you.